Welcome to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast, where you can learn and be inspired by real-world examples of how technology is transforming businesses and reshaping industries in a language everyone can understand. Here is your host, Neil C. Hughes. Welcome back to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast. Now, I'm in the mood to go a little bit deep today. And I think that's after a combination of watching a documentary called Minimalism on Netflix, which I highly recommend because it highlights how people find themselves in high paying jobs or chasing high paying jobs that actually make them miserable just so they can continue to buy more stuff that they want but don't necessarily need. And when I combine that watching that documentary with that old song lyric, the things you own, own you, I find myself thinking, there must be a better way. Now, I'm very fortunate because I managed to escape the nine to five grind and windowless offices in IT teams. But I feel so grateful every day. And the thought of going back to that former life (laughs) sends shivers down my spine. But when I came across an inspirational story by Don Gannon Jones, I had to get him on here today because he's had a huge successful career in technology, despite being told very early on that he just wasn't good enough at math and he he shouldn't be serious about pursuing a role in technology. And boy, did he prove them wrong. He's been in the IT industry now since the mid 90s and has even been the recipient of Microsoft's most valuable professional award since 2003. And not only that, he was the co-founder of PowerShell.org, the DevOps Collective and the DevOps Collective. But he's now written a new book called Be the Master, which is aimed at helping others exit the rat race and define their own version of success, and then using their success to help other people achieve theirs. And man, that is my kind of language. So come with me all the way to Nevada so we can speak with Don Gannon Jones. So a massive warm welcome to the show, Don. Can you tell the listeners a little about who you are and what you do? Yeah, so I currently work for uh, an IT video training company, but I've been in the IT industry for most of my adult life, um, primarily in the Microsoft side. And as I've kind of moved into leadership within the company, I've been focusing more on uh, business management and kind of getting into a little bit of, of self-improvement type stuff, you know, things that, that I think I've, I've learned the hard way that maybe I can just share with other people and, and save them some trouble. And like you said, you have been in the IT industry since the mid nineties and have been yeah. a recipient of Microsoft's most valuable professional award since 2003 and also yeah. co-founded PowerShell.org and the DevOps Collective. But I've got to ask, I mean, can you remember what made you want to get into tech? Oh, I always did. Uh, I, as far back as high school, I was, I was the kid in sixth grade in the library with their one Commodore pet computer who would, would hog that thing anytime they would give me the time to it. (laughs) I actually, my first career was an aircraft mechanic apprentice because my guidance counselors at school told me I wasn't good enough at math to do computers. And so I didn't go to college, which meant I I was told you can't do computers if you don't go to college. Um, And it turns out none of those things are true. Uh, we had a, um, a political thing that wound up shutting down the facility I was working at uh, as an aircraft mechanic. So I just I started bouncing around, got a job in retail, and wound up working for that company's head office in the IT department. My first job was an AS400 operator on the night shift. Oh, what a great story. And of course, yeah. none of us are able to achieve success without that little leg up or help along the way. Is that a particular person that you're grateful towards that helped you get to where you are today? I mean, maybe it was the person that gave you that leg up on the night shift and the IT, or, or was it somebody else completely? You know, I, I think it's it's a huge list. It's yeah. everybody who, who gave me a job knowing that I, I didn't know how to do that job. Like I'd never knew how to run an AS400. They said, but no, that's cool. I mean, you've clearly got the background and the mind for it. So we'll teach you that stuff. It's everybody who did that. Uh, it's the person who gave me my first director position. I said, I don't know how to run a company like this. He's like, that's fine. I'm going to show you. And and I think that's really what a lot of us get is, is a lot of those opportunities come our way and it's other people seeing something in us that maybe we don't even see and giving us a shot. And, uh, and it happens to us all the time, I, th- I think, for most people. Absolutely. And one of the reasons I asked you that question was because I read your latest book, Be the Master, was actually inspired. And we're all actually helped by someone, probably lots of people throughout our careers. But but before we talk about the book, can you tell me about being inspired by the fact that we were an apprentice to them in a way that 
kind of the old fashioned master apprenticeship relationships from the past because it it's fascinating isn't it when you actually go deeper into the subject yeah so having been an apprentice uh, and then kind of exiting that field and I got into the more traditional corporate world it di- it didn't really make a connection for me at first but as I had gone through a couple of jobs I realized that that's exactly what was happening like when I would you know I got the director position I would go sit down with the president of the company and he'd pull up all the spreadsheets and I'd say you know look I'm I don't know how to deal with these accounts receivable issues. He's just cool. I'm going to walk you through it. Let's talk about this and this. And it, it was years later I realized I was an apprentice. I was an apprentice director and he was he was the master. He knew how to do this. He wasn't doing it for me. He was right there working with me. And I, as I started to look at it through that lens, I realized that that's how most of us learn most of the valuable things we know. We just don't apply a lot of value to that because we didn't learn it in a classroom, which is how we're taught you learn things. It's worth pointing out as well that Be The Master is your first non-tech book, but of course it is aimed at tech folks because that's your background. So who is the book aimed at? Who's going to get the most out of this? I think anybody who's who's working in almost any field. Uh, I think that obviously we have some fields that require a ton of education like medical or lawyer. But even those fields recognize that you still have to be an apprentice, right? They call them internships or residencies, but they're really apprentices. And I think that, you know, anybody who's working in a position where they've learned something from other people and maybe have an opportunity to teach it to someone else is is the right person. I don't think there's any position anywhere, you know, unless maybe you're a 12 year old child who just doesn't know anything yet that that doesn't have that opportunity. And I do suspect that most people listening will have a job and dream of exiting the rat race and defining their defining their own version of success, but just don't know how to take that next step. Now, I've done it, so I know it's possible. I was the IT guy sat in a windowless office for X amount of years, but and you've done it as well. But I mean, how does this book help anybody realize their worth, do you think? I think there's there's a couple of steps. One is to to really just you know, the first, the first part of the book is really about taking all these toxic relationships we have that are given to us by our culture, our toxic relationship with education, uh, the people we consider to be our heroes, our toxic relationship with the very concept of success. Like it's this thing we're all supposed to want, but no one can actually tell you what it is. And so we get stuck in this loop of wanting more money, a better title, whatever else. And a lot of us don't, don't even bother to think of why I certainly never did for the longest time. I think starting by recognizing that those are bad relationships and that once you set those aside, a lot of possibilities and interesting things start to open up. I, um, I have one fellow who read the book who said, you know, I went through your whole exercise. I, I, I sat down and I figured out who I was. That was myself and it was my family and the things that were valuable to me. And then I figured out what type of career would be necessary to support that life. And I realized, he said, that I had that career one job ago. He says, I hate my current job and I took it because it was better money and it was a bigger title. And I realized I loved my previous job and it did everything I needed. So he was actually able to go get the job back. They had not filled it yet. And he said, I took the step back down and I'm happier and I have everything I need. And it turns out I don't have to fill every working moment just trying to get ahead. I can have time to go help other people and be with my family and be myself. And I, I think that's really what it is. It's just sliding out of that passenger seat that we all seem to be in where where stuff just happens to us and we take it as it comes down the road and moving into the driver's seat and saying, I'm going to make a decision about where this goes and these are the decisions I'm going to make. And that one example that you provided there is something that will resonate with so many people listening because I think we've all been there in some shape or fashion. So uh, do you have any other use cases or examples that you can share that would also resonate with people listening uh, who are going through that that you know journey we call life and just settling rather than living that full life and wait until the end and then live and realizing how you've living that life of regret because no one wants to go there do they well no it's 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 like every bad movie right every bad dad movie has got the dad who took the career and missed his yep. kids growing up and he was saved at the last minute no i i had one really good story it was from a, a, a fella uh, i forget which country he was in it wasn't the u.s though which which kind of made it stand out to me and he was in a tech job, um, but he read the book and he was like, you know, one of the things you go on is about maybe your apprentice audience isn't at work. Like maybe, maybe there's just nothing there that needs to be shared. And he said, so I started looking around and uh, he has a special needs child and he and his wife 
had really held off traveling much because it was really difficult on the child and just, you know, with, with being in loud environments and everything else. But he started looking into it and they, they didn't want to deprive their child of seeing the world and, and being a citizen of the world to the degree that they could. So they, they made some really successful trips. He said, we had some really bad ones, but I realized that we had learned so much. And so he started a little group in his community of other similarly situated parents and they started sharing and he taught what he had learned. He's very methodical about putting it together. So it was easier for other people to, to take his example and apply it to themselves. He said, and then I started thinking about what success looked like and what I really needed out of life. And he said, I wound up quitting my job and starting a nonprofit that just does this. And now I, I travel with my family all over and we share this with groups and all other types of communities. And I mean, that's what it should be all about is if you can do something that's meaningful to you and you're helping other people do things that are, are helping them out and you can turn that into the thing that supports the life you want, I, like I think you won. Absolutely. And I love how you've got all this knowledge out of your head and you've created this book with the intention of helping each helping other people out all over the world. But I'm curious, do you ever get to hear any feedback from anyone that has taken your advice in Be The Master and actually uh, contacted you or you've just heard the stories? Yeah, I, I have some folks who contact me through my website. Um, I also do the occasional virtual workshop or live workshop with this. And I think because you you meet those folks and spend some hours with them, they feel a little bit better about coming back with an email later. And so far, what I've heard is, you know, it took me a long time to really just put some faith in it because there's a whole system that you kind of have to go through. And it's not a big, complicated system, but you have to stop and think about things and make decisions. And I, I advise that you write some things down because it, it makes it stick in your mind. And uh, they said, once I decided to just give it some faith and and try it and do it, it worked out perfectly. I have I, I'm getting exactly like I know what I want out of life now. I know what type of career will get me there. I know the steps to get that type of career. It's not as far off as I thought it was. And I am spending more time not looking ahead, I'm spending more time looking behind and seeing who's behind me that maybe I can give a hand up. And, and it just, you know, it's, it's wonderful to hear that from people because it means people are now living the life that they chose for themselves, not the one that just got handed to them. And we've talked a lot about how you're helping other people and the stories you're hearing and feedback that you're getting back. But what's next for you, Don, and what excites you about the future? I I really like the idea of of helping share some of the things that I feel I had to learn the hard way that other people helped me figure out um, business leadership, you know, uh, understanding what a profit and loss statement is, understanding the difference between an operational expense and a capital expense. Um, I think so many people, and it, it might be everywhere, I see it in the tech industry because that's what I work in, but I think so many of us are in this game, right, this game of business, and we don't know the rules or even the terminology, and it's just not fair. It can seem really frustrating to look at decisions your company is making and not have any context for why they might have made that. You know, if if people if people understand how businesses work generally, and you can look at a decision your company made and you think to yourself, you know what, that's a bad business decision. Like everything I know about business tells me that that's a bad decision and you've got the context to make that call. Well, then you can decide if you need to work for a company that makes bad business decisions or you can look at something that might be, you know, I don't understand why it's so hard to hire uh, people on staff and we keep hiring contractors. Well, you should understand the reasoning behind that. And if you do and you look at it and go, yeah, OK, like I, I get it. It's stupid that we live in that world. But here it is. Well, then at least, you know, your company's normal and, and behaving. So I'm, I'm writing more books along those lines. I'm doing more more podcasts along those lines. And I, I think it's really just an extension of Be The Master. Like once you've taken over your life and you're driving it, and it's your success. Then you need to figure out how to operate that success within whatever world you're in. Um, and I think those things uh, really do it for a lot of people. And for anyone listening that's feeling a little bit inspired at the moment, listening to us on the 801 bus into the office or something like that, thinking, I, w I want to actually make a positive change and do something different. Can you just remind them of where they can find you online and ultimately find that book as well, Be The Master? 
Yeah, so the book is available uh, internationally on Amazon, both in paperback form and on Kindle. Uh, you can also buy the ebook directly, uh, which is only nice because if I make updates to it, it lets you know and you can get the updated ebook. So that's all at bethemaster.com. You can find every link. There's even an audio book if, if that's how you prefer to consume. Uh, so bethemaster.com has all that. And then anyone who wants to contact me, my website is donjones.com, and there's a, a hit me up link. And I, I really do try to read all those and, and respond to people. Well, I absolutely love what you're doing here. I always say at the end of every episode that technology works best when it brings people together. And what I love about what you're doing here is you're actually using it to help people exit the rat race and define their own version of success and then using that success to help other people achieve theirs. It doesn't get more beautiful than that. So thanks again, Don, for joining me today. Absolutely. I appreciate your time. Wow, what a great story. And it is one of his first non-tech books, and from someone that beat the odds when he was told he wouldn't be successful in a career in technology, to become the recipient of Microsoft's most valuable professional award since 2003, as well as co-founding PowerShell.org and the DevOps Collective, you cannot not be inspired by a story like that. But it's the premise of the book that really excites me. Because we've all been helped by someone, probably lots of different people throughout our careers and lives. We were an apprentice to them, kind of like that old master-apprenticeship relationship we used to see in those old TV shows. And just like in those old relationships, none of us can remain that apprentice forever, although it's kind of tempting sometimes. So we need to pay it forward and be the master ourselves and start helping other people. And that may mean taking some time to recognise our own worthiness. And I think that is the biggest struggle sometimes because we don't find that self-worth within ourselves other people can see it but it's difficult for us to see it ourselves and it might even mean achieving a certain level of success but we all should put aside time and space to help each other all of that is what the book's about and one of the reasons obviously why it stood out to me as this aging tech hippie because that's what makes the world go round. and I do mean it when I say at the end of every episode that technology works best when it brings people together but enough for me getting all woolly with you all (laughs) Let me know what you thought of today's conversation. If you've read the book, let me know your thoughts. I'd love to hear your experiences with that and your experiences and your life story too. If you've been on a similar inspirational story, let me know. We'll get you on this podcast. So and you can do all that or just ask me a question by emailing me techblogwriter at outlook.com or tweeting me at Neil C. Hughes. Or you can also go to my website, techblogwriter.co.uk. Go to podcasts and you'll see 1,100 other interviews that hopefully will inspire you as much as today's. But that's it for today's episode, I'm afraid. So all that's left for me to say is a big thank you for listening. And until next time, don't be a stranger. Thank you for listening to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast with Neil C. Hughes. Remember, technology works best when it brings people together.